Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and in a series of videos, I am talking to many people in self-employed estate agency to find out the real story behind it. Chris Buckler, you are the owner of a Keller Williams Market Center, whatever one of those is, hub or something, I don't know. Um, how long have you been running this London Bridge operation now? We've been going now for about 16 months. So the last time we did a video, uh, we were a couple of months in. Okay. So what has changed in those 16 months? How many people have you got working as associates or brokers or whatever you call them? We're at 30 now. 30? Yeah. Okay. Has that all been plain sailing? No. Not at all. Okay. So let's go through the journey of those 16 months. Okay. So when we started off, as Keller Williams, I'd pick up the phone to people and go, hey, have you heard about the Keller Williams model? Keller who was what we got mm. the whole time. Mm. Just another Remax that, that you can't yeah. get off the ground. Yeah, another American. Nothing type. wrong with Remax, by the way. No, no, um, or any of the self-employed mm. models out there. I've got I've got time for all of them, really. But I think we were the, um, I suppose we're the ones that have pushed it over that 16 months and have, have made headway. And we've been in the press, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Mm -hmm. But the journey for me was, our value proposition at the start was, hey, come and run your own business and take the vast majority of the fee. And now it very much is, how can we learn from those before us? So systems, tools, models, taking agents from not just the value proposition and you take the vast majority of the fee, but we will coach, train, guide, and mentor you to be a business owner. Because you, you profess to be a training firm that just happens to train estate agents. Yeah. I've heard a number of people say to you that some people, some agents join you and then after six months go back to employed life. Yeah, that happens. Uh, the cold, hard reality of the state agency in the UK, uh, if you ask some of my business partners over in the state, so I'm fortunate to have in my world, they'll look at our high street or online model here and say there's, n there's a very, very limited window to create wealth in the state agency. And when you come to something as unique as this, having enough money to, to, to go at it, you're setting up a business. This isn't a switching from one job to is another. It a, is, it, is it a lack of money or is it a lack of attitude? Is it a lack of the wrong attitude? Because the fundamental thing is, let's be frank, yeah. state agency is quite easy. You get the houses on the market, you sell the bookers and earn the money. Yeah. And if it's self-employed, you get to keep more of it. So it's simple, not easy, I would argue. Go on. And what we, what I've learned over the past 16 months is you can have a really great estate agent that has no idea how to be a business owner, or you can have someone that's very good at running a business that doesn't understand how to operate um, a fiduciary world-class estate agency. Now, if you look at my journey- whoa, whoa, whoa. Some people might not want to know those <laughs> terms mean. So fiduciary is I owe a duty of care to the vendor. So I'm, I, if I'm having a hard conversation with them, it's not a power hour on a Friday to get a price adjustment it's sitting on the sofa and letting them self-discover what the right decision is for them. Okay. Um, and and world-class, you'll hear me push that. So each day, my I get up and my goal is to make sure that our, my value proposition to my agents is, if it's a millimeter more world-class, I've succeeded. That's that's the way I look at it, as, as a bare minimum. So you've got 30 agents, what, that work for you? No, I, it, we, we touched on this last time. I'd argue I'm in a business partnership with them. So they choose to power their business uh, with Keller Williams and Keller Williams London Bridge, and they partner with me to give them, yes, you get your right moves, Zoopla, and, and all that good stuff, wonderful office we're in today. Um, but I suppose to, to circle back- Great for train spotting, by the way. It's great for train spotting. Um, but if you circle back to your question earlier of why the agents have come on and then potentially left is a lot of it is to do with mindset, accountability, um, and my ability to have hard conversations with agents when they need it. If you don't mind me saying, I've heard a number of stories of of people bad mouthing the, the self employed agent model because they've joined these you, Benjamin Stevens, Sean Newman's Fine and Country, Richard James, um, and, and plenty of others. And and six months later, been bad mouthing the model, saying they didn't give me the support and the guidance. Do you think that's a fair accusation? Do you, 
when you disrupt something, you're always going to get naysayers. And Keller Williams isn't right for everyone. I'm not going to turn around in this video and say, if you're an agent and you want to create your own business, that there's elements of high street that doesn't work, that the online doesn't work, that's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to say is, if you want to set up your own estate agency business because you're a great agent and you might not have the skill set to be a business owner, that's the, the bridge that we got. Do you think you're better at teaching people how to be more business-like or more estate agency-like? It completely depends. So we are, What do you find with the people that come through your door? Do they need more specific training on being an estate agent or more training on being a business person? It's holistic. And what I mean by that, I sound like a politician. Here's why I'd say it's holistic. I think the general training for estate agents in the UK is quite poor. I agree. Um, so if we're looking at uh, how agents value their service, they, we talked about fiduciary and the fiduciary relationship and really being there for the vendor okay. and, and having those hard conversations, actually having a comprehensive marketing plan, putting stuff out on the socials, all that good stuff. Okay. I don't think the vast majority of agents, they, they kind of know it's there, but they don't know how to express themselves, say, this is what I offer and this is why it's on two, two and a half percent. Once we've got that nailed out, all of our agents run their own business and we set up a business plan, a 135, a 411, and we'll have... What, uh, does, what does that mean? I can, I, anyone can throw numbers out. We can, that. sorry, a 135 and a 411 are Keller Williams tools. So 135 <clears throat> is essentially a one page business plan. And a 411 is how you put that into action and what your daily habits look like in order to achieve the commission income okay. that you, you put down at the start of the year. Okay, but hold on a second. Let's just say I'm a 50, 50, 55 year old agent, been working for corporate for 30 years. Why the hell should I get some millennial telling me what to do? Have, my response there is whether you're millennial, whether you're 50, 60 or 70, um, I've made it my business to know how to run estate agents' business plans and make that something that I'm I'm proud of, I'm competent in, and I don't think age should matter. I think the fact that I love helping agents go and grow big businesses and I know what work, what works and what doesn't. So if you look at my journey into a state agency, I'd never been an agent before I set my own high street up. And for me, it was how do we get a business plan and how do we get listings? Those were the two things that I came into a state agency thinking, not where do my listings come from? and um, what what is a business plan or where <coughs> find one? So when you marry that up with uh, the Keller Williams systems training models and the fact that we advocate we want you to become a business owner and you put those two together along with my coaches, okay. I'd say I, whether I'm 34 okay. as I am next month or 55, that doesn't matter. But every time I go on online, you always seem to be training. Do you actually do any work? We try. Yeah, we do. We do bits and bobs. I think. It all comes down to time blocking. So my view, there's, I, I'll probably... It, I, I, some people have even turned around and says it's just like a, an estate agent's crash and you turn up at nine o'clock in the morning, do trading all day and then go back and you rinse and repeat. Uh, yeah, do you know, the, I'm the butcher of the phrase, but it's if you had 24 hours to chop down a tree, you'd spend 23 hours sharpening, sharpening your saw. For me, we do train, but it's not the forefront of what we do. We have a, a it is at the forefront of what we do, sorry. We have a robust training calendar. Um, but if agents are coming in and doing the training, we don't see that impact on their bottom line or their business plan. The nature of what we do is that we hold the agents accountable to their own business plan. How do you make them accountable? Because they're, they're not accountable, they're not beholden to you. No, I've asked for permission. And I think if I look at my journey and when I've gone wrong over the past 16 months is when I set up my first uh, agency, I straight away had a business partner. So if I had a bad day door knocking or if a vow didn't go my way, um, I couldn't just go to the gym or the pub because I'd be taking food off his table. Um, so now I've kind of self-discovered and realized that I'm in business with each and every one of my agents and they set their plan. I guide, help, mentor and coach them to do so. But I also ask for permission to hold them accountable to it. And are those difficult sort of conversations to have? So, uh, not for the agents knocking out the park, but at the same time they can be. And my role... How does that make them feel? It's, it, it, if I went in and said, you're not delivering, you're not doing the, uh, the activities, you're failing, it would be an employee to employer mindset. And that's not what we do. It's, this is the goal. We haven't done the activities in order to get on track. So how do we course correct? And we'll take them through a process. And if that, there's two or three months down the line, it then becomes a hard conversation as had the goal changed or 
is there something else more important going on in your can world? You, can you spot people that you know damn well? I mean, let's be honest, in this world, there's people that are just looking for everyone else to blame and not themselves. Yeah. Can you normally spot those type of people before they join you so you don't have that issue? Because I do genuinely believe there's going to be some backlash with you self-employed agents yeah. in the coming 12 months. Yeah. Here's the thing. Could I spot it? Yes. Uh, is my gut. Someone once said to me, gut, I just gave up thinking. I can look at an agent and think, my, my inside can say, you're probably not going to work and go and bad mouth this, but am I delivering my purpose or, or being, I, I'm so fortunate to be in this position that if I don't invite them in and give them the chance and, and to, to help them and grow a big but business. But of course you're going to say that because you can take their money off them. Yeah, but I, we only eat, I only eat really well when they eat really well. I, I charge a very small fee for my market centre to be part of it. How um, much do you cost? We're 185 plus VAT a month. And what do you get for that? Uh, right move. If, 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 if you were to pitch it out, you get right move, Zoopla, CRM, all the training, use of the market centre, tech, um, coaching, guidance, mentoring, everything for 185 a month. And what, what do the best do that, the, what, that the, probably the ones at the bottom don't do? Time block. Um, so that's basically rolling out your diary in, in, in layman's terms. It is. So between they'll script practice at 8, 27 till 9, and they will do nothing other than lead generate till 11 o'clock. What does that look like? Just picking the phone up? Smiling and dialing, essentially. Um, oh, you've got all these bloody phrases, haven't smiling you? Smiling and dialing. Um, smiling and dialing. Smiling and Touching base with your sphere. Oh, there you go. So it's like reaching out rubbish, aren't you? I, on, do, so. I do say reach out quite yeah. a bit, which you, I know you really like. There you go. Um, but here's, here's the flip side. How many agents come in and let the right move and zoop leads that have come in overnight dictate their day? And by four or five o'clock, they're shattered. And you say, how'd you get on? Oh, I was so busy today. But what have you done to add business into your funnel? What have you done so that you aren't... Um, you're living a life by design, essentially, versus by yeah. default. And one of the big things I see in the state agency across the UK is that agents are pulled every which way, but tend to be, in some instances, not all busy fools. What the best do in more time block and be brutal with it. So if we get a buyer call in before 11 o'clock, that call won't be answered, but it will be answered later on in the day because we are doing the lead generation activities during that time, smiling and dialing. But essentially, if you don't do that, you're living a life by default, and that's not what we want. So that is what we'll see. We'll also, um, our, our top guys that come in straight away, um, will say, I want you to hold me accountable. I want you to, to almost be brutal with me because you've been through this before. And this, I'm not gonna sit here and say, again, Keller's great. I, I personally think it is. It's not for everyone, but the mindset piece of when you've set your own estate agency up, you're, you're, you don't have that business partner I mentioned earlier. And having someone to be there to help coach, train, mentor, and guide you, but essentially it's your own business, that's the bit where we really, really add value. And that's, that's why I'm here. Can I ask you a final difficult question, which I think you'll find difficult to answer? Why do I move my arms on videos? No. Nope. Okay. What other self-employed models in the UK do you admire? Uh, oh, I have to, if you look at the fine and country model, um, I don't... That's, that's particularly Sean Newman, because not all, the whole fine and country is, an, is a license. No, yeah. But where Sean Newman does it, yeah. Um, I think the combination of the brand and what they've done, when I used to lose valuations in Surly Hole, uh, it often was the fine and country up there, so you have to, to okay. tip your hat there. Okay, so that's Sean Newman and his gang. Yeah. Who else admire, do you admire? Uh, Adam Day and EXP. Mm -hmm. So EXP have come over and they are um, similar uh, in many respects to Keller Williams. And what I like about what Adam's done is he's bought an alternative to Keller. So if people are looking at the self-employed route without wanting to say we're the one that most people look at, if you've got two, we're almost a duopoly or an oligopoly, if you like, with a few of the others and it's bringing it to the forefront of the mind of agents that are thinking, I really want to do this, maybe I'm not sure on Keller, oh, well, if EXP are doing it, I'll look at both. And then depending on what the agent wants to choose, we know that the option's there and it's here to stay. So I've, I've got a lot of time for Adam. Chris, thank you for your honesty there. Um, this is part of a number of videos that we're doing about self-employed agents in Keller Williams. Could you tell me how much you've paid me to come here today? 
I've got to buy your Nando's later. Yeah, because I love Nando's, by the way, because I think yep. from the countryside, we don't have that in Nando's. Yeah. But have you paid me anything to do this? No. I've done this off my own back, my own train fare, and the editing costs, because I genuinely believe that self-employed agency is the way forward. It's not for everyone. And if you're a lazy ass at uh, the Valley where who just sits there, wait, who's a great converter, is not very good at door knocking or business generation, it isn't for you. But if you're passionate, you've got the drive and the fire in the belly, you've got accountability and self-awareness of your weaknesses and strengths, then it could be you, for you. Keller Williams is a great model. Sean Newman's a great model. Adam Day, EXP, and others are out there. But I'm a huge fan of you guys. You don't pay me a penny to say that. And I think it's only important I say that just for the record. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of meeting your fellow associates, brokers that I've interviewed in this series, which will be on my YouTube channel. And is there anything finally you want to say to me, who any agent who is considering wanting to be their own boss? Nice and short and sharp, and no jazz hands. What have you got to lose? And if you look at where you want to end up in five years' time, is your current model supporting the goals that you want to set for yourself and your family? If they're not, Pick up the phone, reach out. I'd love to have a conversation. Reach out. Reach out. Cheers, Chris.